Adonis Stevenson versus Badu Jack. These are my thoughts on the weigh-in and my final thoughts before the big showdown tonight. Badu Jack weighed in at 175, bang on the light heavyweight limit. Adonis Stevenson, I think, was a pound and a half or a pound and three quarters under. And that would seem to suggest that this idea that Badu Jack is the bigger man is actually correct and true. Adonis Stevenson normally weighs in at least a pound under the 175 pound light heavyweight limit. He said recently that he could still make super middleweight. And judging by what he's been weighing in at, I think he's telling the truth. Now, if Badu Jack is the bigger guy, that could be significant if it turns into trench warfare, particularly in the second half of the fight. Because a 40-year-old Stevenson, can he really handle a tough, grueling battle in a long fight? I have my doubts. In terms of the demeanor, how both guys looked at the weigh-in, Badu Jack, to me, looked very focused, very relaxed, and hungry. He didn't look nervous at all. He just looked like he's ready to go and ready to do this job. He keeps talking about being the smarter fighter, boxing smart, and doing what he has to do. Adonis Stevenson, on the other hand, was his usual self too. Stevenson has a very bubbly, smiley, happy-go-lucky personality. That's how he always is. If ever you see Adonis Stevenson's social media, when he posts video clips and whatnot, the guy is constantly smiling. I think I said in one of my previous videos that Adonis Stevenson is probably the happiest fighter I've ever seen. <laughs> The guy is always smiling, always happy, 24-7. Now, Badu Jack said after the weigh-in when they did the face-off that he thought Stevenson looked nervous. I completely disagree. I think Badu Jack is mistaken because he's probably not so familiar with how Adonis Stevenson normally looks. He thought Stevenson looked jittery. Stevenson is always jittery. His body language is always jittery. That's normal. Even in his day-to-day -day life, as I say, if you go on his social media, he has these, these jittery things that he does with his hands and his head, and he just has jittery body language all the time. That's normal for Adonis Stevenson. That's not him being nervous. That's how he always is. He's always got this weird, jittery <laughs> uh, nature about his, his body language. That's how he always is. So, no, I don't think Stevenson is nervous at all. But fighters often see what they want to see. They have a half, a glass is half full mentality and they want to see certain things. They're keeping positive in their mind. So, you know, they're looking at someone, oh, I see he looks nervous. Maybe the guy's not nervous at all, but that's just what he believes in his mind and what he wants to see. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I have to shout out to Kieran because he is wondering if Badu Jack is actually too relaxed ahead of this fight. I personally don't think so. I mean, I guess Kieran is wondering whether Badu Jack is underestimating how serious Adonis Stevenson's punching power is going to be. You know, again, personally, I don't think he is. I think he's aware that Stevenson hits really hard and he's going to take necessary measures. So I, I think Badu Jack is in the pla the exact place that he needs to be mentally going into this fight. If anything, I think Stevenson potentially could be a bit too relaxed and happy. He might be a bit too nonchalant about it because he keeps on talking about his power and his power is what gives him the confidence. He can box too, Stevenson, and he knows he can box. But he's constantly banging on about his power saying all it takes is one punch and I've got 12 rounds to land the one punch, so I'm not worried. Now, it's good to be a happy fighter and Stevenson is a happy fighter, but if there's one thing which is more dangerous than a happy fighter, it's a hungry fighter. A fighter who's so hungry that he can come in and wipe that smile off your face. Yeah? Now, in terms of the happy fighter, this is just something I've you know, noticed for many years when you see a fighter happy in a good place mentally and content. He's usually going to perform well. And this is something Mike Tyson said. That when he was happy, that's when he performed at his best. He said a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. But again, a hungry fighter 
can sometimes be more dangerous than a happy fighter because a hungry fighter is coming in there and he's willing to put it all on the line. He's willing to go to that dark place if need be in the ring. Is Stevenson willing to go there? Is he willing to tough it out in a grueling battle, in a long fight at 40 years old? I have my doubts. I really do have my doubts. Um, I think that if this fight goes past five rounds and Badu Jack hasn't been hurt or intimidated, then he should win the fight. I don't think Stevenson has 12 good rounds in him. He can go 12 rounds, don't get it twisted, he's gone 12 rounds before, but not at a good pace. He can go 12 rounds when it's a leisurely pace, yeah, but when someone's really breathing down his neck, I question Stevenson's ability to be able to go 12 rounds under those circumstances. Fonfara was breathing down his neck and he did go 12 rounds in the first Fonfara fight, but how many years ago was that? And he was uncomfortable, don't get it twisted. Stevenson was uncomfortable in the second half of that Fonfara fight. He made it through. He fought Fonfara on the inside, particularly in the, the last, I want to say, three rounds. He was toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fonfara, fighting him up close. Why? Because his legs couldn't carry him anymore. And that's a pattern I've noticed in Stevenson over the past few years, is that his legs are deteriorating. He's got fresh legs for the first couple rounds, but after that, they slow right down and he becomes very stationary. And once he becomes stationary, he becomes a lot more hittable. Stevenson has a tendency to keep his hands low. So, Badu Jack doesn't necessarily have to be all over Stevenson like a cheap suit. In that instance, you know, when, when Stevenson gets tired and his legs are no longer fresh, Badu Jack don't have to be all over him to, to land punches. He just needs to keep his shape better than Stevenson. Because Stevenson's hands are going to be low. He's going to be looking sloppy. Badu Jack's keeping his shape well. He can be landing nice jabs from long range, right hands, etc. And then going to work at mid and close range. You know, Badu Jack could actually end up having more success at long range in the second half of the fight than Stevenson. Because... As I say, Stevenson's legs are a big part of what makes him effective at long range. His legs and his reach, he moves around, in and out of range, counters you, beats you to the punch, you know, pull counters and all that kind of stuff. It becomes a lot more difficult to do when your legs are tired and you can't move around anymore. And we know Badu Jack can go 12 rounds at a good pace. We know he can come on strong late in fights and we know that he does keep his shape throughout the entire 12 rounds. And this is why I think Stevenson's in trouble if this fight goes past five. That's my view. I think he's in trouble. Unle again, unless he hurts or intimidates Badu Jack inside the first five. Because if, if he hurts or intimidates Jack in the first five rounds, he might prevent Badu Jack from getting too ambitious later on in the fight. He might keep him under manners. He might keep him honest. But if he fails to do that inside the first five, I think Stevenson is in trouble. And it, I think it's Badu Jack's fight to lose, really. If Stevenson don't hurt him or intimidate him inside the first five, it's Badu Jack's fight to lose. He should win after that. He's the younger guy. He's got the better work rate. He keeps his shape better in the second half of a fight. He's been more active. He's been 12 rounds more times and far more recently. So he really should be winning this fight, Badu Jack. You know, if he, if he goes... Certainly past five, he should be winning it. And one of the things I noticed in the stevenson Sakio Bika fight is that Stevenson was missing far more than usual with his left hand in that fight. One of the reasons is because Sakio Bika was actually doing a pretty good job of ducking underneath the left hand if you go watch that fight. And also, Bika, unlike so many of Stevenson's other opponents, is not going for Stevenson's feints. See, Stevenson will sit there on the outside and he'll pour at you with that jab. And he'll feint from time to time. He'll feint as if he's going to throw something to draw a lead from you. So that he can counter or can beat you to the punch. 
Saki Obika would not lead off. So every time Stevenson's fainting in the first few rounds of that fight, Bika would just stand there doing nothing. Like not going for the faint, not flinching, not throwing a punch, nothing. He was just waiting, waiting, waiting. And when Stevenson would throw the left, Bika would duck underneath it. And Bika really in that fight refused to throw anything at Stevenson unless Stevenson's back was, was to the ropes. Then he would try and lean on Stevenson and maul and throw all these crazy octopus type punches. But in the middle of the ring, he was quite good at nullifying Stevenson's left hand for most of the fight, just by not going for the feints. You see, a lot of fighters, a lot of sharp boxers will go for the feints. You know, they'll try and beat you to the punch. Or they'll try and faint back to draw a lead from you. They'll box with you. Beaker was like, uh uh, I ain't boxing with you. I'm gonna hold my ground. When you throw the left hand, I'm gonna duck. And then I'm gonna use that as an opportunity to try and push you against the ropes and bludgeon you. So that obviously means that Beaker was able to read Stevenson's left hand. There was some kind of tell on Stevenson's left hand that Beaker was able to pick up on. And therefore, differentiate between Stevenson's feints and when he was actually getting set to throw a real punch and because he was able to do that he was able to anticipate and duck Stevenson's left hand the majority of times that Stevenson threw it will Badu Jack be able to pick up on that tell the giveaway sign that Stevenson lets off when he's really going to throw the left hand. Will Baddy Jack pick up on it? And if he does pick up on it, what's he going to do about it? Is he going to try and block it? Because that's what he normally does. Is he going to try and duck it? Because I haven't seen him duck that many shots. If he's blocking it, he has a very tight guard. But when you're dealing with a puncher on the level of a Stevenson, there's only so long you can go in a fight blocking his punches until the power starts breaking your body down. When he's hitting you on the arms and the shoulder, the chest, shooting shots through to your stomach, it starts to hurt after a while when you're dealing with a puncher on that kind of level. And Stevenson likes to wear Reyes gloves. Them tiny little Reyes gloves, horse hair. You can probably feel his knuckle right through the glove. He's clearly got sturdy hands to be hitting as hard as he does at 175 pounds wearing Reyes. Not many fighters these days wear Reyes. Stevenson does. So, is it going to be the wisest move for Badu Jack to just try and block every time Stevenson throws the left hand? Or is he going to need to actually use his legs, duck, and show us some things that he hasn't really shown us before. Be interesting to find out. So those are my thoughts. My final thoughts on the fight. And my thoughts on the weigh in. Stevenson at 40 years old. If he does win this fight. Particularly if he wins it decisively. He deserves a lot of credit. And also shout out to Jasper. Big shout out to Jasper. Um, he said that if Stevenson beats Badu Jack. Stevenson has actually got a better resume than any of the other light heavyweight champions. I didn't think of that, but it's actually true. Badu Jack will be the best name on any light heavyweight champion's resume if Stevenson beats him. You can't tell me I'm lying. You can't tell me Jasper's lying. It will be. Yeah? So, at 40 years old, if he wins, he deserves a lot of credit. He's a well-preserved, relatively well-preserved 40-year-old. He hasn't been plagued by injuries or anything like that. Stevenson also turned pro late. I think he didn't turn pro till he was like 28 or 29. So his professional career hasn't been that long. But he does look like an old man. You know, maybe not in his face so much, but his body looks like an old man's body at this point. When you saw them at the weigh-in, Stevenson, yeah, he's in shape. He's got a six pack and all that, but his body don't look the way it looked when he was 33, 34, 35. It don't look the same. He looks like he's lost muscle and yeah, he just, he just doesn't look as, as strong 
you know, or as physically imposing as he did back then. So let me know how you feel about this, people. What are your final thoughts? What's your final prediction? Again, I have to sit this one out and sit on the fence, basically, because I can't call it. All I'm saying to you is, if it's inside five rounds, it should be Stevenson. I don't discount Buddy Jack being able to win early, but I think if the fight ends inside five, it will most likely be Stevenson. If the fight goes past five, I'm saying it's most likely Buddy Jack that wins. You know, I'm not completely discounting the idea that Stevenson can win late or win on points. Not at all. I'm talking about probabilities here. And for me, in all probability, if it ends inside five, it will be Stevenson winning. If it ends past five, it will be Jack winning. That's the best I can do for you guys, all right? So let me know how you feel in the comment section below. And again, I get people occasionally saying to me, oh, Hatman, don't sit on the fence. Sitting on the fence is a genuine and real position. I don't pick just for the sake of picking. You see, I, I don't get this attitude of people who say, oh, you have to pick a winner. Why do I have to pick a winner? If I'm not sure who's going to win, then what use is it me just picking a, an answer out of thin air? Anybody can do that. Somebody who knows nothing about boxing has got a 50-50 chance of accurately predicting any fight. And if they get it right just by chance, what, does that mean they're a boxing expert? Does that mean they know loads about boxing? No. I'm only going to take credit for predictions I get right when I've actually got some kind of idea about who's going to win. Not when I just make a random guess. <laughs> you know? Nonsense. Like that's, that's not real. You know, don't just pick for the sake of picking. Pick if you think you really know who's going to win. That's a real position. That's not just random guessing. You understand? And, and, and when I'm conflicted like I am with this fight, the best I can tell you is Stevenson inside five or Jack after that. So anyway, let me know how you feel, people. It's happening. I'm out.